Hey everyone, Irit here, and today I'm sharing with you a review of this set of watercolors. So this is the Paul Rubens 24 half pan metallic watercolor set. It comes in this beautiful pink tin, which I won't deny, that was definitely one of the reasons I picked it up. I got mine from Amazon UK, United Kingdom that is, and the stated price is £50, which is quite pricey, but they had a 20% off uh, voucher, so I used that and that came to £40 for the set, which is quite pricey, but per pan it's not so bad, in my opinion, anyway. I'll cut to the chase and save you watching the whole video in case you're interested in these. I really like them. I think they are exactly what they're supposed to be. So they are very metallic, very shimmery, semi-opaque to opaque depending on application watercolors. They are beautiful to work with. The color selection is quite good. It's not perfect. If I could have chosen the colors, I would have made uh, a, a few changes, but all in all, they are beautiful. There's also a 12th half pan set, which costs more than a half, if I'm not mistaken. And this company also offers regular watercolor sets, which I haven't tried. They come in the same format, in these same gorgeous pink tins. I think I've also seen on AliExpress that they have blue tins, if I'm not mistaken. So those are all the details and my final judgment. If you're interested in more and you want to see these swatched and how they look and everything else, then keep on watching. I found these watercolors on Amazon UK, as I said, completely by accident. I never heard of them before and they are not so easy to find. I've seen them on AliExpress. I think they're also available on Amazon.com, but that's pretty much it from what I could see. These are made in China. There's a lot of information in Chinese. They come in this pretty box in another pretty box. I think very, very pretty packaging for a present. That would be really nice. My outer box was a little bit banged up in shipping, I guess, but the tin inside was perfect. So no, no harm done. The information pamphlet that comes in this set has a list of watercolors, but these are not the metallic ones. It's le at least the codes don't fit. So I guess it's, um, it's about their regular line of watercolors. I don't know. I searched online for these watercolors for the company. I couldn't actually find their website with the information. So I think that's like the only shady thing about this set. I would say if you absolutely need to know all the information about these and how light fast they are, then I don't know, maybe you'll find it challenging because I couldn't find the company. I started with searching for Paul Rubens. Then I searched for the Shanghai Iowan Art Materials Company, which is also the name is on this pamphlet. Again, I found some website of a company with a similar name. Maybe it's their new name. Maybe they changed their name. And when I went to that website, when I clicked the watercolor tab, there wasn't any information there. So I don't know where these come from. I don't really know who makes them. That's the one thing. I don't really care because I mostly use these in my art journal and they work really well. So that's all I care about. But if you are interested in that information, I don't know where you can find it. So one of the things I really like about this set, besides the performance of the paints, they are really pretty and some colors are very, very beautiful. I like it that it's in the same format that I'm used to. I mostly use these tins 
with half pen watercolors. So it's very easy for me to use this set. And also having those half pans, it means that I can take a few of my favorite colors, move it to a smaller pan, create my own custom palette. And for me, that's that's quite a big thing, especially if I want to have kind of one go-to palette that has, let's say, a mixture of these metallic ones and the regular ones I use. So I think that's one big advantage of this set, especially when I compare it to other types of metallic watercolors. A lot of the metallic watercolors are made by companies that are aimed more at crafters as opposed to artists from my knowledge. Please feel free to correct me or add more information in the comment section. But the ones I know are you have things like the um, sparkling H2Os or however they're called and similar products by Lindy Stamp Gang and Shimmers. And from my experience, the ones I've tried, they're all very nice, but usually they come in these little jars and they're just a lot less user-friendly, in my opinion. This, The fact that this comes in the same format that I'm used to with my regular traditional artist grade or whatever watercolors, that's a big plus to me. I don't have to take a bunch of jars from a drawer and this is very easy to have on hand, very, very compact. And also when I compare it to the Prima set, if you're familiar, Prima has a set called Metallic Accents. I think they actually have now two sets, but the first one they came out with, it's a metallic semi watercolor set. And later in the video, you will see a comparison of the colors. The colors are not identical. So some are similar, but um, yeah, most most are different. The formula is very, very similar, but the Prima set only has 12 colors. The box is very bulky and large. And then you have the large um, pans of that set. So. Formula-wise, they're very, very similar, but on color selection and packaging, this Paul Rubin set is a winner. So let's get into the colors themselves, and I'll talk a little bit more about how these compare to the artist-grade metallic colors that I'm familiar with a little bit later in the video, because now I want to switch to the colors. So the first one is called Pearl Silver White, and it's exactly that. The base is has a slight white pigment to it, and then the shimmer in this is silver. The next one is called Pearl Platinum, and that has a, a very transparent white base again with a kind of a pearly gold shimmer to it. Um, they are, they look kind of similar in the pan, but I don't think they're very similar. And this is a good color for glazing, I would say. If you want to add just, you know, that silver shimmer, or that gold shimmer, and not have too much of a base color, um, so a lot of the original color will shine through. I think this is a good option. The next two colors are a little bit too similar for my taste. They're not identical, but I feel like they could have just went with one here. So the first one is Flash Yellow, and this is a very sparkly, kind of a light, almost buttery yellow. It looks on the screen now a little more vibrant than once dry and kind of more yellow. The colors look a little bit more yellow on screen than in reality. The fourth color is Deep Interference Yellow, and it is very, very kind of a metallic gold. I would say that is the most golden color in this palette. It's called yellow, but I would say it's gold. <laughs> the next color is very, very bright. It's Deep Interference Orange. It has um, the base is an orange color, and then there is an orange shimmer to it. Very vibrant, very pretty. Next color is Royal Gold, and this color is a little bit more of a bronzy, 
gold than the deep interference yellow it's it's i would say it's the set the copper in the set or something that is most similar to copper very very pretty and it has a pretty granulation on textured watercolor paper which is this little pamphlet that comes with or swatching card that comes with the set that I'm swatching the colors on um, on the right side of the screen so you can really see the granulation nicely on this paper next color is bronze satin and it is exactly that it also has a pretty granulation and it's just a beautiful bronzy shade moving on to the pinks my favorite so the next color is flare red and it's actually not red at all there is no red in this set or at least there's no bright red in this set this is a soft pink I would say with a very glittery almost kind of silvery purplish shimmer to it it's very very beautiful um, it's I think it's one of the more glittery shades in this set the next color is deep interference red and it's a similar pink but it has more of a like a fuchsia shimmer to it and it's a lot less glittery than the flare red the next one is wine red and that's more of like a muted color it's not red at all it's just very muted also granulates um, kind of like an earthy burgundy color I would say um, it's it's one of the more earthy tones in the set and therefore not my favorite because you know me I love bright but um, it is beautiful and it has a really nice granulation so yeah next color is called pink and it is a pink but it's quite I would say it's kind of more metallic when the other two that I mentioned before the flare red has had this really like glittery finish to it and then deep interference red had this almost like a fuchsia shimmer this one looks more metallic it's kind of hard to describe these so I'm I hope I am kind of giving you an idea but you can also see on the screen so the next color is one of my favorites in the set it's called rose red it's not red at all it's uh, somewhere between like fuchsia and almost like a violet color it also has an interesting granulation and the shimmer here is more on the purplish side so when you turn it a little bit you know to see how the light hits it it has kind of a shift from that pink color to you you see more that purple shimmer moving on to this gorgeous color this is called crepe myrtle <laughs> I don't know what it's supposed to be if it's supposed to be grape or crepe I have no idea what crepe myrtle is leave me a comment if you know what that is so the base uh, the, the pigment here the base of it is kind of you can see like a like a violet color or a very cool pink and then it has a soft like almost lilac shimmer to it the next color is a very interesting one it looks very bright in the pan but as you can see it applies a lot more muted which I actually like I'm not a huge fan of the um, classic purple so it's called symphony purple and it also has a purple shimmer but the base color itself is more like reminds me of moon glow if you're familiar with the the Daniel Smith color even though this color doesn't have that blue granulation that moon glow has um, but that kind of that's the base of the color it's a kind of a grayish purple next one is super super pretty one of my favorites it's called deep interference blue it's a very vibrant bright turquoise blue with um, kind of a turquoise shimmer to it super pretty next one is also very pretty <laughs> it's called symphony blue and it's a bit more muted I kind of wish there was somewhat of an ultramarine shade here that's probably my two main complaints about the color selection that there's no ultramarine type of blue and that those two yellows the third and fourth are 
quite similar, but th that's that's about it. Other than that, the color selection is good. So shiny blue is a little bit more turquoise and very, very pretty, very shimmery. The, the color, the base color and the shimmer kind of match in tone. So you just get that type of shimmer look. I hope that makes sense as opposed to the other ones, you know, that have more like a purple shift or gold shift or that sort of thing. Deep Interference Green is my perfect minty color. It has the same type of shimmer as the base color and it's just gorgeous. The blues here are very, very beautiful. Next is Fruit Green. That's more um, kind of like that yellowish, brighter type of green, which I'm all about. I do prefer them to the more bluish forest greens. And yeah, I think it may have a hint of gold in it, but yeah, it's just a really pretty green. Now we get into the more earthy colors and those are, I have to say, I'm not usually a huge fan of these types of colors, but these are very, very beautiful. So the first one is golden maroon and yeah, it has like a brown base and then the shimmer is a greenish gold. Very pretty, interesting color. The next one is dark green. That's the one I just swatched before. And yeah, it's just a dark green, less exciting to me. <laughs> now I'm swatching brown and that one granulates beautifully. It's a beautiful kind of a cooler brown my thing. I'm not a huge fan of those mustardy warm browns, so I'm happy with that one. Silver black is beautiful. It is very metallic, very, very metallic, very intense, exactly as it is silver black. That's a good description. And the last color is called flash purple, and it is beautiful. It has a very glittery finish to it, kind of silvery tone and the base color is this really muted purple. I really, really like this color. It's a great, it's my type of muted purple color. Beautiful. So these are the swatches. And this was uh, a lighter application. As I've said, if you put a drop of water and you let it sit for a little while, then you get a more opaque application, which you can see now there are um, there's another layer, so you can really get an opaque uh, look from these. Now I want to talk a little bit about how these compare to the few that I have from Artist Grade Brands. So I have the gold color from Schminke. I would say this is very comparable. I also have the dot card from Daniel Smith and one of the more metallic colors. I find, at least the, in the dot card, the colors are a little bit more challenging to activate. And I would say, unless you can't, like me, you can't find any information about the light fat fastness ratings of these paints, and that is something really, really important to you, then going with a company like Schminke or Daniel Smith, where you can find all that information, is definitely uh, a good choice. However, if that is not something critical to you, if you do art journaling or that sort of thing like I do, then I would suggest to save your money and go for something like this as opposed to the artist grade ones. If you are on a tight budget, now you can see the, the Prima set. If you're on a tight budget, I definitely recommend, and this is something you're interested in, go for the Prima set. They perform, they're almost identical. I don't know who makes both of these sets, but I wouldn't be surprised if they come from the same factory because they really behave the same. Um, it's just if you want more colors, if you have the budget, if you like the half pan uh, format or the pink tin, I won't judge. That was one of my attractions <laughs> in this set, then maybe consider the Paul Rubens ones. So this is it. I hope you found this video helpful. Please leave a comment if you have any questions or if you have these and you want to also share your opinion. That really helps the people who watch and are thinking about, you know, buying a set. Obviously, more opinions is better than just mine. But yeah, that's what I think about this set. I'm happy I got it. I think the price is okay. It's a little bit pricey, but I think um, 
it's it's good value and the tin is pretty did i mention that the tin was pretty <laughs> so yeah i will leave links to where i found the set and um, also for the journal that i'm using thank you for watching and have a wonderful day bye